write an equation in point-slope form. And really, I mean, just because we have a graph, like, they could ask us to write it in, write it in slope-intercept form. There's all kinds of different things we could do here. The figure shows the right triangle, ABC. Now, you'll also see it written like this, where it just has a triangle symbol, symbol, and then ABC in all capital letters. And that's because in geometry, points are labeled with capital letters. And because of the point being labeled that way, we could say the same thing about angle A here, angle B, and angle C. They tell us it's a right triangle, but also this symbol down here lets us know that it's a right triangle as well, which is necessary as we deal with slope. So we have triangle ABC here, and for this triangle, we're told to write the point-slope form of the line containing hypotenuse AB. Now, if you're not sure what the hypotenuse is, all you need to remember from way back in the past is that's the longest side of a right triangle. And if you're also confused about AB, well, here's A, here's B. So I would represent a line AB like this, showing that it would go on forever. But in this case, it's just a segment of a line, so they just call it AB with a bar above it. As you're doing these problems, it's really a nice strategy to take a ruler and line it up right here so that you can actually make this stand out more as a line going through A and going through B. It's nice because it means when you look back and forth between the drawing and your work, you clearly see which line you're working on. And you won't accidentally grab this other coordinate, C, that you really don't even need to know for this problem. Let's break this down maybe a little bit more than is necessary. I know that if they want point slope form of line, this is what I need. And for these separate pieces, that means I'll need to know a coordinate through which the line goes, but I'll also need to know the slope for that line. Well, we definitely have a coordinate, but we don't have the slope, but I know we can calculate the slope. In finding the slope, since you'll often set up your problem by writing down the equation first, the slope is probably something that's nice to do on the side. So here's m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The hope is that by this point, this is very practiced. So when I look at y2 and y1, I'm again making sure that I avoid the coordinates for c. I'll do 4 minus 1. And when I look at x2, x1, I will do 6 minus 2, and I'll get 3 fourths. I'll box it so that it stands out, and there's no need to simplify that because it's already done. So now I'm going to go and write y minus, I'm going to write equals, I'll put the 3 fourths there, and then x minus. And I've intentionally left empty spots here and here. And it doesn't matter if you choose 2, 1, or 6, 4. You might have to look in the back of the book and, you know, be a little bit flexible when you compare answers, but either of those will work, because you only need a point. So just arbitrarily, meaning not really caring which one I choose, I'll choose point A, which gives me 2, comma 1, which I plug in there, and there's no need to flip signs or do anything like that. Having spent all that work there, it's easy to forget that we have a part B. So that as I go to write this in standard form, maybe I rewrite the formula with everything plugged in. And now it's like you're just simplifying with a target of hitting your standard form. Here, nothing to do on the left side, but I'll distribute 3 fourths to the x and the 2. I'll show all my work for this one. 
a little bit more simplifying involved, 3 fourths x minus 3 over 2. Now I don't like to deal with fractions, so I will take this whole problem and multiply it by 4 with the goal of canceling out both of these numbers. This gives me 4y minus 4 equals 3x minus, well now this 4 and that 2 would become 2 in the numerator, times 3 gives me 6. Pause the video if you're not sure what I'm doing. I'm talking about just algebra here, and at this point, the new idea is kind of the most important thing. So I'm not explaining all the steps of the algebra and fraction work that I'm doing. It would be really nice if we had the x's and the y's on one side, so I'll subtract 4y, leaving me with negative 4 on the left, 3x minus 4y minus 6. Only thing left to do is to add 6 to both sides. And in this step, I'll move the variable part over here and my number part over there to save me having to rewrite everything again. So that means that 3x minus 4y on the left side is going to be a positive 2. Then lastly, the number in front of x is positive, so we're good there for standard form. It doesn't matter that the value here is negative. But everything, 3, 4, 2, those are as simplified as they're going to get. I can't divide all three by the same number. So since they wanted standard form, I'm finished at this point. Read through this. And if by the end of the problem, it's really clear what I did, or you start to see that maybe you could shortcut this, well, that's awesome, but you should also always kind of err on the side of caution. And If you weren't sure how to do this problem from the start, then maybe you shouldn't cut corners on something like this later on. So for this one, we'll start thorough, but then it will become an OYO problem. And the reason I'm saying it's going to be an OYO problem is because it'll end up being basically the exact same thing. In this picture, we were given the graph with all the A, B, C points shown. But in here we have J, K, L, and we're not given the triangle. So first off, go ahead and plot these points. I'm going to have you pause the video, and I'll just put J, K, L up in a moment. So here's J, K, and L. And when they're shown in the textbook, you'll usually see this, but I like to put equal signs, just to be clear. In the instructions, we're told to write the point slope form of the line containing side JK. Since they're focusing us on JK, that means we're really just interested in these two points. And just like we did on the previous problem, let's go ahead and make this a mesh. In finding the point slope form of the line, we know that this is our target. Y minus Y1 equals M times x minus x1. Well, we know a definite point. We know a slope. So, on the side, figure out your slope. But I'm going to put the answers to everything up, including B, in a few seconds. So pause this video and finish. Totally fine if your answer doesn't look the exact same in A. And that's because I chose the point 1, 2, which was J. So if you chose K, you would get something different. If you chose L, that would be a mistake because L is not on this line. But in B, after you take what you got in A and worked your way towards standard form, you should get the same thing. And the reason you would get the same thing is because in standard form, there are rules that you have to uh, stick with. So just like earlier, you have to have all integers, which I do, and they all have to be simplified as much as they can without fractions, and you could not have a negative in front of x, but in front of y is okay. So if you found any small mistakes or anything, or check my work, just see what's going on there. 
Now what I will say is, you didn't have to graph any of this. But like I said earlier in the video, if you didn't know what to do, then you probably should still graph it because it helps you see why the problem is the way it is. Because if I'm told to write the point slope form of the line containing JK, then I would really just ignore this, use this to find the slope, and then plug in one of those two values. But you have to be able to picture that in your head and uh, know your way through the problem from the get-go. So like I said, if you weren't sure how to do that, as with everything I've taught this year, building the picture, drawing the graph, setting up a table if necessary, all those things are further supports to get things to make better sense. A lot of uh, book work assigned here. That's because, just like everything in this whole chapter, it is necessary to uh, take this stuff to mastery.